Um, I mean, thank you uh, again. Thank you for agreeing to do it. I'm no, really thank you. Really, I'm really excited. Yeah, and I, I've got so much, you know, real positive um, from from people thinking about it. But just tell tell me a little bit about how um, the course works and um, how you got involved in it. Okay, so um, shall I give you a bit about m my background, Yoni? Yeah, then, that would be good. Yeah, um, and then it, that'll kind of fit in with um, how I kind of got um, into DDP. So um, my my background is um, I qualified um, as a child and family therapist um, 25 years ago now. Um, and um, I've been really lucky to have um, some really um, interesting opportunities and I've worked in a variety of different kind of settings with different client groups. Um, I worked in, um, I started off working in um, schools and um, colleges um, doing therapy there and then I was employed by um, the NSPCC for um, about 12 years. Um, and that was um, predominantly working with um, children who have experienced um, trauma um, and um, kind of largely um, sexual abuse and um, looked after children. And um, so I was doing the video interactive guidance, which I loved. And then I came across the DDP, which um, stands for Dyadic Developmental um, Psychiatry and um, read about that. And it just seemed to fit like a glove with um, kind of the way that I work um, and kind of, um, you know, the idea that I really um see the benefits of working with parents um as well as children and and not just children in isolation um so i did the uh, training for that and absolutely loved it and have been doing um a combination of the ddp and the um fig work um predominantly with um adopters and um long-term foster carers so yeah that's that's how I kind of um discovered DDP so why do you think um DDP can be so powerful I think this the 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 real kind of um strength is as I say doing that work with the parents um and the children um in in and not just working with children in in isolation um if i work with children i see them once a week um for a session and they're with parents um the rest of the time so um what tends to happen is um the the um children are kind of um triggered quite a lot um and parents aren't, aren't understanding that so um, parents can often um, respond in a way that's not therapeutic to the child which is then re-triggering the trauma um, for the child the child will then usually present in a way that might be hostile or, um, or um, they might um you know become um they'll become dysregulated in 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 some way um or just become detached from from the parent um and the parent then obviously doesn't understand what's going on for the child can become very frustrated themselves because they feel like that they're trying absolutely everything and they are um often um investing so much um and giving their all so when that um, that bond and that communication um, isn't working well, parents um, can then become deflated, um, exhausted, um, burnt out, and then you have um, the situation of blocked care. So um, it, I, I think the beauty and the strength of DDP is, is definitely um, doing that work um, with the whole family 
um, rather than just taking the child and, and having individual sessions with them. And the work always starts with um, parents, so um, the children aren't, aren't, aren't seen um, in, in the beginning. Um, and parents, um, we look at um, attachment, their own attachment styles, um, because that will obviously um, impact on how, um, you know, they present, present and relate to um, children. We look at um, therapeutic parenting using the PACE model, um, which is um, was devised by Dan Hughes, an American uh, psychologist. Um, and um, we, we, we look at what's going on for parents um, in a really kind of non-judgmental, um, non-critical way. Um, the most important thing um, that parents feed back to me is that it's a safe place where they can feel um, that they can be open and honest about how they feel about um, their child or, or, or children um, without feeling that they're going to be um, judged. So that's really, really crucial in DDP that people can be kind of um, open and honest. Obviously that takes a while to build up. So um, it's a therapeutic intervention. So with any therapy, the most important thing um, is that parents feel that trust and, 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 and that safe kind of, that they have that safe place. Um, and then it's looking at kind of the barriers that, um, that are there to them responding in a therapeutic um, manner um, to the child. Um, exploring that, relating that to their own experiences, background, um, expectations, conditioning, all of that stuff that happens to all of us. Um, and really understanding what's going on for them. So, so again, a, a lot of the work is understanding about what's going on for parents, um, not just the child, which, um, which I think is the difference with, with, with DDP and more kind of traditional therapeutic interventions. Um, breaking, um, understanding those kind of parallel processes and looking at then how, um, how parents can um, respond um, using the PACE model. Um, so with kind of pure um, DDP work, that would be, um, sessions would be um, once a week and you'd have a combination uh, of, of those with both parents. Um, with the group, um, it, it, it's not gonna be so um, it wouldn't be so intense because obviously it's in, in a group um, setting. Um, and if parents did want to kind of do that um, kind of pure DDP work, then um, that would kind of be separate. Um, maybe after the group, um, they could they could look at that. Um, but um, the kind of um, the content of, uh, of the course would be quite similar. So it would be looking at um, attachment styles. Um, it would be looking at um, using the PACE model, therapeutic parenting and understanding, um, just giving parents that awareness um, really. And then because it's a group, obviously it's not going to feel as safe as what um, individual sessions would feel. Um, so it's up to parents how much they kind of want to open up, um, you know, in, within that group. Um, everybody has to feel safe. So there's no pressure um, for people to, um, you know, have to kind of um, share everything. It's just about how much people feel comfortable um, sharing. Really interested and um, I'm excited to um, be involved in, in the group. Um, what do you sort of ask of um, adopters or um, there may be foster carers who, who come on the group, what um, sort of would be good for them to think about or to prepare? Or... Yeah, um, so usually um, um, adopters 
and, and foster carers have um, some basic knowledge of um, therapeutic parenting um, that they've, you know, um, uh, attended um, in, in, in prep um in preparation for um for either their role um as foster carer um or um adopting a child um so and and, and a lot of parents um and foster carers because they're i don't think you can ever fully prepare um for you know what the, um the actual experience so um often when i work with um parents and and um carers they will um say oh I remember doing that training ages ago but they've been so caught up and it, um you know with, with the actual experience of, of of trying to care for a child and, and and cope with everything going on um that they've not really thought about that so maybe um I would say um for parents and carers to maybe just um refresh their memories um, and, and go back to that kind of therapeutic um, caring um, information that they might have been um, given. Um, and also maybe if they're just thinking personally um, about what, what they're actually, um, what it is they're actually maybe struggling with. So certain behaviors, um, what are their own personal um, triggers? And, and if they are in a couple, how is that different to their partners? Um, what have they kind of noticed about how their partner responds um, and presents to certain behaviours um, compared with themselves? Often it's much easier to observe in a partner than it is to notice um, about ourselves. So, so often I ask couples to have that conversation and to feed back to one another what it is that they've actually um, noticed or what their thoughts would be about the other person. Seven session course, um, delivered obviously on online. Um, and then if pe um, people are interested in going further with you, um, then they, they, they're able to do that yeah. um, after that group. Yeah. That is brilliant. Um, and I think we did, we'd agreed half an hour of your time with, with people um, after the group or to, to draw together the themes, is, is that right? Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's, um, that's really important. Um, and as I say, people are or can be um, either talking or if not talking, thinking um, about a lot of sensitive um, personal um, information, um, and it, it you know they, it, it can be really triggering um, for people. So I think it's really important that people have that individual time if they need it um, outside of of the actual um, information sessions um you know i'll be doing activities with people but um people need to be comfortable and feel comfortable and if there's something that they don't want to um engage in that's absolutely fine and if we are coming together as a group and and people are feeding back um there's no um expectation that everybody has to feed back it's just what people are comfortable with if they want to that's great if they don't want to that's absolutely fine brilliant okay well i'm really looking forward to it i think the first session is on the 25th of october um <clears throat> so thank you for explaining it and i'm um, really looking forward to it thank thanks yanni me too